I'm going to backtrack a little bit and it, hopefully it'll offer some perspective on number one, my concept of, you know, stability versus change and, and kind of like the new normal, which is a yeah. term that's getting thrown out a lot of, um, lately. Um, but also might offer some perspective on just maybe some, some concepts of resilience that I think are really important um, as they relate to change and stability. Yeah. Um, after 9-11, but just prior to my entire battalion deploying to Iraq, I injured my hands. Um, it was a training accident right yeah. here on board Camp Pendleton. Um, I'll, I'll kind of show you my hands, but I'm missing the fingertips of all but the pinky on this left hand here, and then yeah. a lot of the fingers here on the right hand. Um, I won't um, bore you with the, the, um, the micro details, other than to tell you that it was kind of one of those Swiss cheese model accidents where um, there were probably 20 different things wrong, that went wrong with this training range um, that ultimately led to my injury. Um, yeah. It was a pretty disheartening injury um, for myself, number one, because it meant that um, I wouldn't be able to deploy with my Marines because I knew that a deployment was coming. And this was, again, the, the opportunity to test myself to see if my Marines met the test and really to validate all the training that we had done. Um, but number two, because my injury was was partly of my own making, like there were mistakes in that Swiss cheese model that I was responsible for. And it was really hard for me. To, I mean, frankly, like and I even still describe it as a bit professionally embarrassing yeah. um, as someone who places a really high degree of confidence and pride in the work that I do. And uh, so I was kind of I almost felt like I was walking around with this this stigma of, man, that guy that guy screwed it up. Right. And yeah, a lot yeah. of the rules of the range are written in blood. And I had a really hard time coming to terms with um, the fact that number one, I was dealing with um, what some might consider a physical disability. And number two, I was partly responsible for it. And I'd be lying to you if I told you that I wasn't down in the dumps and having a bit of a pity party for myself after it happened. Um, for sure. What was interesting about the subsequent injury that I had, which was almost two years to the day, um, following my hand injury was that I was almost kind of primed for that kind of need for resilience. Um, and even though the injury was different, the concept of facing an injury like that was something that was entirely within my wheelhouse. Yeah. And I felt like not only, not only was my mental outlook one of positivity, which I feel like your podcast and, and just your outlook on life really um, champion in which I'm a huge champion of as well. Um, but my ability to recognize that there is no such thing as a normal, whatever the new normal is, is just going to be what is right. Yeah. Um, you know, Nick, that reminds, so my mother died when I was 10 and my brother was eight. My dad was a uh, major in the air force at the time. Yeah. And sorry, she, she died. Know. Well, that, that, well, I appreciate you saying that, but she struggled. She had a very difficult struggle with breast cancer for about five years, lost her hair to double mastectomies, multiple broken hips. I mean, it was really tough, but yeah. looking back on it, it has, I think, steeled me or given me some resolve. It, it, it's given me two things. Number one, it's made me realize that life is short. And so, you know, you're better off looking at things from the most positive perspective you can than the most negative thing, negative way you can. But the other thing it taught me, I think, is resilience. And Nick, I got to ask you, how was it with that kind of injury? Were you able to stay in the Marine Corps? Like, because a lot of people that get injured like that, you're not going to combat. So, sure. How, how, how were you able to? How were you they, able they to put get me over that injury? Called a, yeah, so what they did was, and again, there are physical standards that you have to meet um, in the Marine Corps as well. And they put me before what's called the Medical Review Board. And the convening authority on this was a guy who's an orthopedic surgeon. And basically, it was his job to test the functionality of my hand and really to determine if I wanted to stay. And of course, yeah. you know, I, I wanted to stay not only um, because I felt like the concept of, of service that, that I had intended to join up for in the first place hadn't been fulfilled or realized yet, but also because I hadn't, I hadn't gone through the challenge that I felt like I needed to, in order to say, Hey, I, I've got what it takes. I can, I can, my metal has been tested. So, um, this convening authority, um, who was a great guy, by the way, I don't remember his name, but asked me basically, Hey, can you still shoot a rifle? Can you still do pull-ups? Can you do all the things that are required of you as a Marine Corps officer? And uh, I set out during my rehabilitation period to prove that I could. And right around the time that I met Toby was when I was teaching myself how to, 
how to do pull-ups essentially with one finger on my right hand. And yeah. I've since learned how to incorporate like the portion of my index finger that's still capable of doing that. And I, I was able to do all the things that I needed to. And so, yeah, ultimately I decided to stay. And uh, this, this convening authority was kind enough and, and uh, recognized, I think, my desire and capability enough to, to allow me to stay.